Hi, this is Sandy Aberly, and this is Gardening Together. So welcome to Apple Cottage, and I am Suburban Homesteader, Wyoming. Now, every Tuesday and, and Thursday morning, we do gardening together, and we have different topics and tips and tricks and things like that. So I first of all would just like to thank everybody that subscribes, that comes over and watches my videos each Tuesday and Thursday morning. And I'm so excited that every week it gets closer to spring. And so that we can get out of my garden. Like right now, well, we just got six inches of new snow. So it's just piled up there. Which is really a nice thing because it's just a great insulator for all my plants and trees and bushes and shrubs and everything. And even my rhubarb. Because rhubarb has to have in the winter time it has to go below 40 degrees or you're you won't have rhubarb it will die eventually it has to have that cold um, season now it, there are some facts so let's get through the facts first and then we'll go to the fun stuff on average a pound of rhubarb will be about three cups of chopped rhubarb or two cups of cooked rhubarb. So if you're making something, that kind of gives you an idea of how much rhubarb you need. And I like I have a lot of rhubarb plants and so I chop a lot of them up, throw them in the freezer and freezer bags, and I sell a lot of them to people. Because people want to make their own favorite rap, rhubarb recipe, but a lot of times they don't have um, the rhubarb in their in their yard. So that is just a little great suburban homesteader um, income stream for me. But I love rhubarb. In fact, in my yard, I have five different patches. Now, not five plants. I have five different patches of rhubarb. The largest being about four feet by about 16 feet. And you're probably saying, what in the world can you do with all that rhubarb? Well, I make jams and I make jellies and I make um, rhubarb pie, I make strawberry rhubarb pie, I make breads with it, I make muffins, um, and I actually even make ketchup from, from rhubarb. Years and years ago in England, the tomatoes would, were only in season for a certain amount of time, and they made something that was like our, kind of like our modern day ketchup. But when the tomatoes weren't in season, then they would um, make a ketchup type sauce that was made out of rhubarb. It is so delicious. Now rhubarb can be many different colors. Um, red, green, red and green striped, or what they called speckled, which is kind of more of a pinkish color. It'll have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, but it's kind of speckled. Rhubarb has a lot of C um, vitamin and vitamin K. It has potassium, manganese, and calcium. So good things for you. The leaves are completely poisonous. Don't ever eat those, cut them off. I put them in my compost pile. A lot of people say you can't, but that's just not true because they biodegrade so fast. It is amazing with no effects in your compost pile. Now, some people will tell you the redder the rhubarb stock is, the sweeter it is. Now there are a lot of sweet red, red um, rhubarbs that is true, but that is not the case. It's um, based on the variety because there are some green ones that are just as sweet as the red ones. In my research, I could find 32 different types of rhubarb plants, which was more than I thought. And you can either buy a crown or you can start your rhubarb by seed. I choose to start it by seed. And I get seed from other people so I don't just have the kinds that I have right now. But right here I am going to stop the video and insert some of my um, rhubarb that was growing from seed. Just so you have an idea what it looks like when it's just barely growing. Okay. So aren't they so cute when you see those? I love them. Now, root, um, the roots of a rhubarb in, in England years ago, 15th, 16th century, they had medical, 
medical properties that they used. A lot of people don't do that now, but if you do your research, you can find some information about that. A rhubarb is a herbaceous perennial, which means it dies back in the winter time and then it comes back up from the crown and the roots. Probably the easiest problem that a rhubarb has is a crown rot or a root rot. And a lot of times it can be fungus or bacteria, but a lot of times it's just that it's not in a well-drained soil. It's just too wet and it's not drying out ever. So if you're careful with that, your rhubarb can be productive for years and years. About every four or five years, you should just take a spade and just chop it right in half. If it's really big, chop it in fourths and then leave one of them there and then move the other to different parts of your yard or give them to somebody. Now, rhubarb has two holidays. January 23rd is National Rhubarb Pie Day. So just a, a week or two ago, we had National Rhubarb Pie Day. June 9th is National Strawberry Rhubarb Pie, which is a favorite of so many people. It's delis delicious, you know, how can you go wrong? It's perfect. But rhubarb, the, the roots and the stems, they have used to um, dye fibers, fabrics. They have used it to color hair. And they use, some places they use it to color Easter eggs, which is kind of fun and crazy and. <laughs> now, you've planted your rhubarb plant and then um, the leaves are coming up. A lot of times if it's a cooler, wet spring, you start getting the seed heads. You wanna cut those all the way down to the, as soon as you see them, you wanna cut them all the way down to the base because that takes energy away from making the stalks in the in the leaves and so if you want to save seeds just wait till later on in the summertime you just don't want it to use all that energy right away so i just chop them down every time i see them but i like growing them from seed i mean i'll certainly take somebody if they offer me a crown of course i will but they're really fast growing and i'm always shocked at what they want for them in the nursery when they grew them from seed and I know how easy it is. But a lot of people don't wanna grow their own seeds. Now, an interesting thing that people do with rhubarb is what they call forcing rhubarb. And that means that they're, they're gonna make it grow sooner than it, they would normally. And you can buy rhubarb forcing pots and they kind of look like a bell shape. They're really tall usually made out of terracotta, but honestly, you could turn a big bucket over and it'll do the same thing. But really what it's doing is just heating it up and so that it makes it, um, the stems to start to come out. They're always, like if you have a red rhubarb and you forced it, it'd be very pink. If you had a green variety, it would be very white. But it can make them very, um, well, they come up earlier. They can be very tender and very sweet. In England, actually, they have fields of rhubarb and they have these temporary shelters that they put over top of them and they forest these huge areas and they sell them like that because they're so sweet. I think that's interesting. You always have to do it on a two to three year old um, crown. You can't do it before and later on it doesn't work as well. So that, that little time period of two and three year, years old works really well for forcing your rhubarb. And uh, the idea is that you can get it so much earlier and it's sweeter. So I think that's just a, a preference. Now, a lot of times, depending on the summer, I will start having rhubarb, it'll start to come up early. You know, sometimes it gets snowed on. And I usually have it into July and stuff. But if we have a good year, I have rhubarb all the way into September. And the more you cut it, never cut more than a third of the plant at one time, but the more you cut it, it stimulates it to grow again because it wants to grow and then it wants to do a seed stock because all plants want to propagate themselves. And so um, if you just, you know, every week you go around and you chop it, um, you will just have tons of rhubarb.
Now, as I said before, you probably the most popular ways are making pies, jams. But my brother loves strawberry rhubarb, but he doesn't like the texture of it. So I throw my strawberries or rhubarb in my steam juicer and I steam all the, the good juice out and that way I can make jelly. And that's a real easy thing because sometimes people just don't like that texture. It tastes exactly the same, though it's very see-through instead of where you see the pulp. But those are choices. Now, what else do I do with my rhubarb? Every year, I have many, many classes in which we make um, bird baths and we make stepping stones. And sometimes my leaves can be so huge. I'm going to send, put it, a picture so that you can see it. And I make them out of concrete. You can make them out of some different materials, depending on how the weight you want. But I always, um, especially when I'm using the big ones, I put a, a wire mesh in between the two layers of concrete, just so that it's very strong and sturdy. Because I don't bring mine inside. I leave them out all winter. And I don't want the heat and the cold and stuff to fracture them. And it just makes them stronger. Because I have some humongous rhubarb leaves. And it's just a, such a fun class. Now you have to know that if you're making a bird bath, you need to seal that so that none of the concrete um, chemicals will come out and hurt your birds or small animals, depending on where you have them. My goal this year is to make a three-tiered rhubarb leaf with small, medium, large, and I'm gonna make a waterfall out of it. So when I go to do that, I will video that. Now, if you haven't tried to grow rhubarb, try it. You can just have it in one little spot. Now you will have people that tell you, you have to have it in a sunny location and it has to get 10 to 12 hours of sun every single day or you're not gonna have the pr produce that you need. I say poppycock to that, seriously. I have five different patches in five different areas of my yard that get completely different sun. My largest patch is behind the wood pile, so it gets the morning sun till about 11 o'clock. So it gets early morning till about 11 o'clock. Doesn't get any sun after that. Huge plants. Then I have one that it gets sun not till about 10 o'clock in the afternoon and it gets it till about four. Fabulous. In fact, that one probably produces the largest leaves that I have. But it is probably my oldest patch too. And that can, you know, that crown size of those plants can make a difference. I have a patch that has grown up just in between some gooseberry plants. And so those gooseberries filter the sun so much, but it gets morning sun for about two to three hours. Then it doesn't get any sun until in the afternoon. And then it gets it till about when the sun sets it. So it gets quite a bit. Then I have one that's over, that is under a huge tree. And so it gets lots of morning sun and then it gets lots of filtered sun the rest of the day. And when it was younger, that patch was younger, it just got sun because the tree wasn't that big. So I think any place you want to put that rhubarb plant, as long as it gets some sun, it will grow for you. Today, I took out two quart bags of rhubarb and I'm gonna make two different um, rhubarb crisps, one for us and one for some really good friends of ours. And so I'll add that to the very end of the video when I pull those out of the oven. So scrumptious. So this is Sandy at Apple Cottage. As always, like, subscribe, share. The rhubarb crisps are out of the oven. You can see they're still boiling. So yummy. I wish you could taste them. I'm going to link the recipe because it's so easy. Thanks for watching.